The Mountain of Malifor, better known as the Well of Souls or even the Well of the Night on rare occasions, is an asylum for the souls which choose to travel the path of darkness. But what exactly is the story of this place, of those trapped within? Greetings historians, welcome to Lore of the Dragon. The Mountain of Malifor was constructed a great time before Spyro entered the fray. Malifor, a purple dragon and thus an individual of unimaginable power, had grown beyond the power and control of the dragon elders of his time. This was met with banishment to the wilderness of the dragon realms. A rage and hate came over him, a hate for his own race. He then came to a far-flung place, a mountain of which he made his fortress. And it said Malifor assembled an army of apes, telling them how they might use the very life force of the dragons, and gifts from the ancestors for their machinations. And in his exile, the sheer weight of his own malice and hate cracked the mountain. It became a pit of despair, a place flooded with the darkness that swelled within Malifor, and became a prison for those with darkened spirits. But upon a lunar eclipse, better known as the Night of Eternal Darkness, the souls of those dark and now fallen could walk the halls of the mountain, and those beyond its walls would be drawn to its foul call. But yet even worse, if a soul held a terrible amount of power, such a soul could crawl out and return to the Dragon Realms. After the fortress had been completed, and the Well of Souls being created by Malifor, we can only speculate as to what happened. It stayed under the control of the Dark Armies after Malifor started his war against the dragons. But the once fortress of Malifor would later serve a purpose used by the defenders of the Dragon Realms. At an unknown time, Malifor was split between his essence and his soul. While his essence would be kept in a dimension known as convexity, his soul would ironically be held prisoner within the pit he himself created. By the time the Night of Eternal Darkness was approaching, Malifor's essence had been released from convexity by a dragon imbued with his power and bent to his will. The King of the Apes, Gaul, a general of the Dark Army, had been using the mountain as a place to command his forces. Its call to the Dark Souls of the Dragon Realms were answered, including the recently liberated but tainted Cinder. But worst of all, it was believed that the knight perhaps could allow Malifor to finally break free from his confines. It was primarily the former point, as well as the latter, that prompted the new purple dragon, Spyro, to chase after Cinder and enter the mountain fortress. After a chain, Cinder was taken to the mountain, and Spyro had come to rescue her. The night of eternal darkness had begun. Suddenly, a beam of dark energy shot out of the mountain, and in the fight between Spyro and Gaul, the young dragon would fall into it and absorb the darkness of the Well of Souls. In the aftermath, it was the fate of Gaul to fail against the now corrupted Spyro, and perhaps join his many ape companions in the Well of Souls itself. But the battle had left the mountain's structure compromised, and it began to collapse in on itself. Spyro, Cinder, and his brother Sparks only barely escaped being crushed by the mountain. With Spyro's quick thinking, he used his recently acquired time element to freeze all three of them in crystal, although this would trap them in the rubble of the mountain. Meanwhile, with the means of escape, Malifor's soul finally reunited with his essence, and the Dark Master once again waged war against his kind. However, it would not be the fate of Spyro, Cinder, and Sparks to be trapped there, suspended in crystal. Three years later, in the rubble of the mountain, new minions of the Dark Master, known as Grublins, captured the two dragons, but missed Sparks entirely. Spyro and Cinder were to be sacrificed to a creature of rock and magma, a golem. They would be brought to a place known as the Catacombs, while Sparks would be left behind. However, another watch from a distance, Hunter of Avalar. He retrieved Sparks and followed the Grublins, leaving the now destroyed Well of Souls behind. As always, a big thank you to my Patreons, Abyssal Blue, Jabby, Lazy, Shaggy, Kiasu Shin, Ubiquitous, and Lacko312. I'll see you all the next time I talk about lore and speculate. Stay safe, historians.